welcome to Season. My name is Jason and here's my review of Doctor Who Seasons 5 to 8, spoiling only the seasons before it, so if you haven't seen Doctor Who, I would recommend watching my first Doctor Who review first. Here are my brief ratings of every individual episode. If you want to ask about any individual ratings, I'll be happy to go more in depth in the comments. I'll rate the overall seasons with an A to F grade, but for now, let's get started. Jumping straight into Season 5, we have Matt Smith as the new Doctor. I mean, you know the premise of Doctor Who, right? Just, just get on with it. One thing you'll notice is the production quality is way up and the series as a whole feels a lot different. You've got a new production team, new showrunner in the form of Stephen Moffat, and well, a new Doctor of course. So the series regenerated. Is it for the best? Well, season 5 is one of my favourite seasons as a whole. Matt Smith gets some getting used to after Tenant, but this season has this wonderful fantasy feel to it. Amy Pond is a fantastic companion, the series no longer feels as cheap, Vincent and the Doctor is a bloody masterpiece, and it has a ridiculously epic finale. It's not a perfect season though, Victory of the Daleks is pretty meh, and the Weeping Angel 2 part doesn't stand up to blink from season 3 at all. But as a whole, season 5 is probably the most consistently good season Doctor Who has to offer. An easy B+. Plus. Season 6 is a strange one. It has this really prominent season arc, no spoilers, don't worry, that gets a little wibbly wobbly. It's not the hardest to follow, but for kids it starts getting a bit heavy on the plot. I really enjoyed this season, but it's definitely one of the most polarising, and the finale doesn't really have the payoff it needs to for all that setup. I think the season might hang on how much you can stand River Song. That being said, this season has so much going on for it, with personal favourite episodes being The Girl Who Waited, A Good Man Goes to War, and The God Complex, with the weakest being the lame piratey The Curse of the Black Spot and The Wedding of River Song. B minus, almost a C plus? Again, depends on your fondness for River Song. I mean, she's a bit too much for me. She's just, we well, get it, you're sassy and flirty, just just get on with it, Christ. Here's my theory on season seven. Stephen Moffat probably spent more time getting the 50th anniversary right than this season, so it suffered dearly for it. No bones about it, this is a bad season. Clara is really underdeveloped. Oh, what's that Moffat? Another sassy, strong, independent woman who don't need no man is flirty and gives the doctor a run for his booties? Y yeah. The season arc is played off as a mysterious puzzle, like season 6, but it's a puzzle without the pieces. It is no way solvable by the viewer, nor exciting, nor clever. The individual episodes are extremely mixed, and the two-parter in New York with Amy and Rory and the Weeping Angels is not good enough. Nowhere near what it should be. The finale wasn't great, but I guess it sets up the 50th anniversary well? It flows badly since it was broken into two halves and... I don't know, man. The best episodes were Hyde, Journey to the Sense of the Tardis, and Nightmare in Silver. The rest were either mediocre or just bad. D+. Plus. Probably a bit harsh. Oh well. The 50th special, The Day of the Doctor, is really, really good. Matt Smith is the Doctor. David Temp is also the Doctor. There's lots of Doctors. John Hurt's in there, it's super fun. Really cool lore-wise as well, and just balls to the wall fan service. Delicious. Not a season, so it gets an awesome rating. But I'd also like to recommend all these other 50th anniversary stuff that they made that I've listed below. I highly recommend an adventure in space and time with uh, David Bradley. Season 8 brings us Peter Capaldi, the broody, cynical, asshole doctor. I love this doctor. Everyone's like, oh, he's too much of an asshole, or ew, he's old, but no. I mean, he's old, but he's fucking fantastic and as close as the doctor can get to Rick from Rick and Marty without fucking swearing. That's a good thing, though. Haters be damned. The season is like season two in quality. Super hit and miss. Listen, Flatline, Into the Dalek, Mummy on the Orient Express, all really brilliant, high concept episodes, which is what I think Doctor Who does best. But then it's real stinkers like Kill the Moon and In the Forest of the Night that make you think, really? You produce an episode like Flatline and that happens? Doctor Who, I swear to God. Oh yeah, and they finally got round to giving Clara characterization. You know, that important thing they forgot from season seven. Apparently she was a headstrong school teacher who struggles between the adventures she lives through with the Doctor and a grounded human life as she slowly and surely becomes more alien to her own family and friends the whole time. Who knew? I bloody well didn't, and the season finale is pretty good. Nothing mind-blowing, but what a great villain. Man, that villain, eh? The one I can't talk about without spoiling it. That one! But yes, Capaldi is great, and his season is great. He gets a B! Just a B! 
There you go! All the seasons rated. He had a bumpy era under Mofat, but I still think he's doing a fine job, and I think he's a great choice as the showrunner despite his faults. Watch interviews with him, that man lives and breathes Doctor Who. And that's it! Thank you for watching! This is a weird and long review to do, so if there's anything you thought I missed or want to debate, I'll happily fight you in the comments. Subscribe to this channel if you want to keep up to date with future reviews. Next week is a review of Gotham Season 1. You can check out my other reviews as well. But for now, I will see you later. Oh, I'm such a fucking nerd.